Hi everyone, welcome to Code Comicage YouTube channel and welcome to GitLab series. In the last video, we had seen the home components of GitLab and we have discussed about what all uh, features that are available in GitLab uh, root level. So today, um, we are going to discuss about the features or components that are available on project level. So in the last video, we had seen how to create a project and how we can keep our code into the project. And this video, so what all features is GitLab providing on that project? And how can you customize your project by utilizing GitLab features? Then currently we are using Community Edition, which is free version. And it may vary if you are using the enterprise version too. So let's not waste the time. Let's deep dive into the concept. So as, as you can see, like, you know, how a bunch of projects were created uh, since a year and it you know, have been uh, doing such a few POCs as a uh, small kind of implementations. But yeah, like I will walk you through one of the repository, uh, which is the um, DevSecOps, since we have been um, going with the DevSecOps principles and best practices. So if you see here, um, this is the repository, uh, which was created by me on three days ago. And I have uh, explained how to create a repository in GitLab and how can uh, push your code into GitLab um, by using ID. If you're not familiar with the web ID, you can what you can do, you can uh, download the um, Git bash uh, into your local machine and you can connect your local machine into your remote repository and you can push to the particular origin. In our case, we can call it as a you know remote repository. So yeah, like you know, uh, this is how you, uh, you can uh, you, you can access the repository and you can see here I have the GitLab ca.yaml file. So we already discussed about it in the uh, beginning of the session uh, in the series. I'll walk you through uh, how you can create the GitLab C.YAML file and what all keywords do we can use it. And here I have integrated on Flask application. Um, Flask is the Python uh, framework. I just have written some basic code, hello world code, and I have run some test cases. Other than this, nothing I have done uh, much complicated. But leave up the uh, leave about the code. Let's discuss about the features that we have in our uh, project level. So I have pinned these uh, two, which is a pipeline repository. If you want to unpin it, you can pin it or you can unpin it. That's up to your requirement. So, you know, GitLab is giving amazing feature. If you want to uh, access the few uh, features uh, regularly, so you can pin it on the uh, uh, project level, you can use it as directly instead of going each and each and uh, uh, subgroup level of each feature. So here, the first component or first feature is manage. Under manage, we have three, which is activity, members, and labels. So let's open each one of them in a new tab, and we can discuss each one of that uh, manage features is independently. So already we had seen our activity in the last video. So what all activities is happening in this particular repository? So if you see here, three days ago, I have um, updated GitLab C.YAML file, so updated the app.py, and you can see what all changes they have done, and you can go to this uh, uh, you, you can see what all activities that happen over here, and you can see the, all the activity in a sch schematic diagram. Thing. So, push a new branch, create a file, and push it into branch. So, bunch of activities were happened uh, one day ago and later uh, three days ago, and you can see all the uh, activities that are only available for this account. But if you want to see specific to the uh, you know uh, repository, you can come to this activity uh, feature, and you can see only the um, activities that are happening on this DevSecOps repository. So three days ago, I have posted. So this is my commit ID. If I open this, you can see what all commits I have done. And you can see here, so I have uh, integrated Bandit. I have uncommented out and commented few uh, code inside it. So this is how we can check the, all the activities and what file uh, you added or what file you removed. And you have all the push events and you have all the merge events issue events and comments and wikis and designs and teams. So this kind of imaging, uh, you know, features this GitLab has been providing. You can take advantage of all these features and you can, um, you know, track all the uh, activities uh, on, on this DevSecOps repository. And the next one uh, under manage, we have the members. So if you see here, like, you know, um, this is, you can invite a new member. Let's example, um, I would like to invite a guy who wants to get the access of this repository. Or less example, I'm working with the three team members, so I have created this repository, and I would like to give the access to the two or two other members. So what you can do, you can just uh, click on this invite member, and you can provide his username or email ID. And if you see here, we have the bunch of people which are available in the you know um, you know 
uh, as local uh, community level. So you can onboard any one of them and uh, um, you can mention their email ID and password. Or if you have any specific email ID with this domain of your company, you can specify it. And the next, we have the roles. So we have the bunch of roles, which is guest, which is going to be a specific period of time and reporter and developer and maintainer owner. So each role has its own set of, uh, you know, access and uh, managing of your GitLab. So we'll discuss about all the roles in the future um, upcoming session in GitLab itself. But meantime, if you want to give access to somebody for guests, you can provide it and you can specify expiry date. Like, you know, hey, I would like to give access to the particular so-and-so person only for uh, one year. So let's example, let's give uh, access to this uh, uh, Kulvi Dharmant. So this is the guy I'm going to give as a guest uh, role and i'm going to specify when it is when it when the access is going to expire so i can specify may 24 um i'll specify the may 2025 and i'll specify the date so march 1st uh, this this access has to be expired so this is optional so if you don't specify the um, expiry date like you know it, it doesn't ask any mandatory so it's up to your optional and if you want to restrict the access only for a period of time you can do that or if you don't want, you can give access to permanently to the guest role and you can read more uh, role and permissions by clicking on this tab. So once you click on invite, so the email integration will go to the particular person. Our case is a uh, uh, Kulvidhar Mart. Um, so he has to he has to approve, he has to accept it. He has to accept the invitation. So once he accepts the invitation, he will uh, he he can he can see this DevSecOps repository as uh, he can access access this DevSecOps repository in his GitLab GitLab account so this is how we can use a you know a member feature to uh, you know invite somebody uh, when you're within organization and outside organization so you can invite group people also like if you have a, a set of groups so since already we have a security group and test group so we would like to give access to all the people or all the group level so you can take advantage of it and you can uh, specify what is the role and you can specify all the roles guest reporter or developer maintenance owner and you can specify the expiry date so this is how guys like and you can even give a specific invite invitation for each member or if you want to invite a group uh, member so you can take advantage of uh, you know members feature under manage and the next one is the label so you know you know you can apply the labels up to a match request and you can categorize them so let's create a new label like you know since few options are uh, you know since since you are going to um get the few options only on community level and few options may not available on uh, community level because it's open source uh, so we can use it for um you know few options uh, uh, uh few options restrictions only so you can specify the while you are creating a match request so you can specify the labeling which means like hey uh, my code has some issues or i would like to use a red color and blue uh, pink color and i can use it so you can specify what is the label of uh uh, uh, title of label and specify what, what's uses of this label and you can specify the label color. So if if the code is match, uh, it's, it's uh, code is ready to uh, review. So you can specify this green and you can mention, hey, uh, ready to review of my code and you can specify any one of the title and you can specify it. So it's up to your customization, guys. Like while you created the match request, so you can specify it. We'll discuss these options, like you know, you know, while we're discussing about merging the two branches together and giving approvals to somebody. So that's about the labels and we have the uh, plan. Um, let's close these tabs and let's go to plan. So we have the issues, issue boards and milestones and wikis. So when it comes to issues, like you, know, you can you can raise the issues and you can concern about it and you can discuss about it. And um, so you can bring the ideas or uh, you know plans to be get executed. You can you can um, it, it can make this more dynamic or you can enable the Jira integration with the GitLab. So whenever issues happen, you can trigger the Jira and it get created a story or uh, you know a task accordingly. Can get it up uh, assigned to the particular developer. When it comes to like you know issue boards, like you know you can open the issue boards, you can create it up and you can uh, make it as a more uh, discussable or make it as a more centralized, uh, uh, transparent discussion. So you can take advantage of issue boards and you can write it up and you can add it up the title and you can create the issue and you can make it up closed or you can give us labels so it's up to your customization so while you are discussing about issues and you bring all the all the uh, issues together and you can give a title for this let's example uh, python i'm giving as a issue, issue board as a type as a python you can create up 
and it will get created so if you see here it has been created so uh, you can see so add uh, add to tool list and this is the um, uh, this is the tag of it and who is going to get assigned and what is the milestone what is the time for tracking and due date and labeling it's kind of uh, less exam considered is kind of a tracking of your uh, um, issues or uh, in other hand you can say that it's kind of tracking of your task or kind of stuff which is provided by gitlab so this is of uh, amazing features we have with the gitlab and the next one is milestone so we had seen the milestones where we track the issues and you know over a uh, period of time so we already discussed about the milestone in the last video so if you haven't watched the last video i suggest you to go and watch the last video about it and wikis so if you want to write some wikis about the documentation or if, if you have been working on this uh, project for a period of time and if somebody as a new guy or uh, guy has ha onboarded into the project and you'd like to give some rough intro rough introduction about your project so what you can do you can write the wiki about the uh, repository and projects so you can upload over here and you can bring it as a first page of your uh, um you know uh, repository and everybody let know about your project even if you don't need to explain it explicitly to everybody because you have mentioned what is the necessity of the project and why it has created and what all um businesses it has been implementing and all so you can discuss all about it and you can bring this wiki as a front page and you can make it is more dynamic by taking uh, advantage of this wiki feature so these all um, you know features do comes under plan and let's discuss about the next feature which is the code so under the code we have the uh, merge request so uh, if you want to merge two branches you can take advantage of this merge request and uh, if i do open this merge request so merge request is a feature where you can uh, take a advantage of list of uh, merge requests are available which is open and merged and closed and all so if let me show you one sample one so if you would like to merge my code uh from uh this uh, uh devsecos pipeline into main branch so what i have to do i have to create a merge request so once i click on this compare branches and continue so you need to specify what is a source branch first so which source branch you are going to merge into what is the target branch so in our case our source branch is like devsecos pipeline and the target branch is a main so we are going to merge our source code from uh, here to this branch so once you click on compare branches continue so you can see all the basic information so what is the title of your merge request and you can give a description about it and you can see who's assignee and who is a reviewer and you can see the we have we have discussed about milestone right so you can take advantage of milestone here and uh, just now we have seen the labels right so which we uh, which we shown under the uh, managers like this, this labels so what you can do you can give the label of this merge request so uh, what is the status of this uh, merge request and after that we have the more options which is you can delete the source branch when you make this request is accepted which means like i would like to delete this devsecops pipeline branch when it is merged into main i didn't want to keep it so you can take advantage of it, this uh, feature as directly and if you want to do that activity you can just uh, check mark on that blank or else if you want to squeeze the commit when the merge request is accepted so if your merge request is accepted into main or you'd like to squeeze a commit so you can take advantage of it and you can see what all commits uh, are uh, going into the main branch from my source branch. You can list out all the commits. And if you want to see the pipeline, so how many pipelines have ran into this particular branch? So it's showing the 13 pipeline ran into this particular branch. And what all changes, like you know, it will show you the dynamic uh, value of your files. Look, what all changes is going to be, uh, ex uh, going to add into the target branch. So in our case, like we have the GitLab CA.yaml and it is already existed. This is the existed one and it's going to show the uh, basic differences, like what all differences or what all changes we are going to uh, merge into the main branch. So this is how you can take advantage of merge request and you can bring the changes from one branch to another branch. And if I go to the next feature, uh, in our case, we have the repository. So repository is a feature like we can track all the repositories and, you know, uh, if you see here, like, you know, we have a bunch of repository like DevSecOps, Pipelines, Revert, and Main. So you can take advantage of it. You can uh, switch from one repository to another repository, and you can see the history of all the uh, history of this particular uh, repository. And if I switch to the other branch, the history will be changed. So as according to, like, what all commits were happen on each repository, it will show you. So this is how you can get more information about it. And uh, so... You find files like and if you want to find the files you can take uh, advantage of like if you want to get the file which is app.py to showing that okay uh, since you are working on bunch of uh, files in the same project so 
if you cannot find the file so what you can do like you can come to uh, this repository and if you want to file a specific it and you can come at you can uh, give us some filtration and accordingly it will give the files existed or not in the repository and you will bring the file as in the top and accordingly you can open it and you can see the all the changes on the same file so it's a more dynamic right so you don't need to worry about uh, going on each inside of the directories and sub directories and you don't need to worry about the uh, path of your uh, file so you just come here and just click on this find button and it will automatically give the file name and automatically it will bring that up and edit so already we have seen like you can take the option uh, 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 advantage of edit which is a quick id and you can use the git pods so uh, git pod is an amazing feature like you know you need to enable it so integration is kind of it's kind of just integration you need to enable it so once you click on this enablement so it will bring the git pods so and if i go and click on it so it will bring it up the dashboard and in the dashboard uh, we need to give the uh, basic configurations and authorizations so it's kind of you know uh, usage for monthly connecting linkedin account so it's kind of thing where it's going to be uh, usage and you need to uh, 10 hours per month so it's kind of uh, going to charge for it so you can connect with your linkedin or uh, you can connect with any other um, you know resources with your gitlab and um, you know, social media accounts, so you can take advantage of Git pod and you can bring more dynamic changes or more dynamic exposure to the you know current world. You can you can you can send the or you can give update of your current project if you are working on local uh, or if you are working on the um, uh, public repositories as, as explicitly. So that's about the Git pod, and uh, we have a bunch of features also. Your you have workspace you can take the virtual sandbox environment you can use it about it and already you know like you know if you want to clone the repository you can use ssh and uh, https and we have the uh, visual studio code ssh bunch of integrations you can take advantage of it or if you want to download the sources like we have the different extensions zip tor tor bj2 and tor so we have the different extensions where you can take advantage of it and you can clone or download the uh, source code so that's about the repository and the next one is the branches so branches is a kind of a feature uh, where you can uh, look into all the branches so if you see here my active branches are devsecops pipeline revert and main branches and you can do the branching rules also like how you want to create the branching rule so we can we'll discuss about that when we are going to discuss about the cacd settings and uh, so if you want to create a new branches so what you can do you can come over here in the branches you can click on new branch and you can your branch name and uh, from which branch you want to create so while you're creating a branch you need to give some reference like for example i would like to cut a branch from main on the name of uh, gitlab uh, hyphen new hyphen branch so this is the branch i would like to give as a name and i would like to cut this branch from the main which means like i would like to get the source code of main and i didn't want to use the main as a directly i would like to take the another duplicate branch so that's why what you can do you can take the advantage of branching you can create a branch once you place on create branch so it will create the uh, another branch which is the same replica of the main and it will it will copy all the source code which is available on main branch and it will create a new branch called as git branch new branch if you see here it just have created uh, now and it will it will have all the information about the main branch but if you see here updated two days files and we have the same configuration which will be reflect into the main branch so this is how we can create the uh, branches from uh, cutting uh, from taking reference of one branch to another branch so since you're working if you're working on the big project and you have any default branches such as develop or mean or any other feature branches and you would like to cut the your own branch so you can take advantage of this branching and you can uh, cut the branches and you can uh, you can do the more dynamic work with by taking advantage of it the next is commits so if you'd like to see the all the commits history of the specific branch you can see uh, you can look into that and i would like to see the commit history of um, my devsecops pipeline so i can come here i can see this is my commit id and this is i can copy it and if i want to see what all files are available in this particular commit id i can look into that so that's about the commits and tags so you would like to create a tags for your repository um, you can take advantage of it 
you will see like you know how we can create a tax dynamically into the coming sessions because tax is a kind of different concept so while we're discussing or while we're splitting the parent and child pipeline so we can take advantage of it so i i'll give a bit just a uh, minute of in, uh, information as example you have the uh, parent and child pipeline which means like when you if you have created a parent pipeline so automatically it has to create the child pipeline so that case you, know, you can take advantage of tax and you can uh, make it is more dynamic while auto creating a tax or manual creation of tax we'll see like you know we'll discuss about this in a uh, future session how we can bring these tax or more dynamic uh, creation from child pipeline to parent pipeline and the next is a repository graph. So we can look into the repository graph. So what all commits and changes have happened on each branch. If you see here, um, get a new branch and we have the reward branch here. And if you see here, we have the DevSecOps pipeline. So you, you, can look, you can look into the graph more dynamically who has committed and what all changes he has bringed up. And you, you, can, you, can, you can, if you click on this, like it will redirect to the particular uh, commit and you'll see the what all changes would happen. So this is how you can see that you are all the commits, uh, commit message along with that, you can just click on it. It will bring that uh, file dynamically. You can look into the changes and what changes would happen on particular commit. So that's all right. So GitLab is more dynamic, guys. Like, you know, it's, it's bringing more advantages feature than the uh, earlier. And the next one is compare uh, revision. So if you'd like to compare, uh, you know, two branches and would like to see the changes, what all changes are available. So what you can do, I'm going to specify the source branch is my DevOps pipeline, and I'm going to compare with my main branch. And I would like to see the only incoming changes from source, like what all changes are coming from here to this branch, like DevOps pipeline to this main branch. So I'd like to see the only the changes, or I would like to see the included changes that the target source was created. So you'd like to see the, all the changes that were target was created by comparing these two branches. You can take advantage of it. But let's see what all changes are going to come, or what all changes are going to apply from this DevOps, DevSecOps pipeline into the main branch. So if I press on compare, so it will show you what all, uh, you know, changes that is going to bring. And if you see here, commits on four, 14 commits were there in source and it is going to uh, apply all these changes into the main branch. So this is how more dynamically you can look into that while comparing the two branches. Uh, this feature can be available while you're creating the major request, but if you don't want to create any MR and you, you just want to compare two branches as separately, so you can take advantage of this compare revision and so you know you can look into that like you know uh, what all changes are going to available and here we have the more dynamic uh, feature which is we can uh, we can create a merge request from here itself so if you click on uh, create mr it will uh, bring the same web page what we have seen in the earlier and here you can give all the justifications what why you're creating and what all changes you are going to bring and accordingly you can create the mr which is merge request so snippets, so we have already discussed about snippets, kind of a piece of code where you can write it up and uh, keep it into your, uh, uh, you know, uh, home level or, you know, project level. So it's it's going to be reusable in the different projects or different uh, groups level. So that's about the snippets. And uh, if you go to the next feature, uh, is a group we call as a build. So under build, we have the different features such as pipelines and jobs, and we have the pipeline editor, and we have pipeline schedule and artifacts. So let's see, um, you know, uh, pipeline. So uh, if you click on this pipeline and uh, GitLab will show what all pipelines are running on this GitLab CI and what all pipelines had been running by taking advantage of it. So here you can see like, you know, we have the few features, which is all and finished, what all finished pipelines are available and what all branches uh, had been used to create the um, uh, this pipelines and tags. So we will discuss about this tags like in a coming session. Already we have discussed about it, right, about it. So yeah, you know, you can, if you click on this pipeline, all the pipelines will be listed. So how many branches have, uh, you know, used for creating this pipeline, if you see here, this is my branch. If I click on this, I'll redirect to the particular branch and I can see all the commits. And if I want to see the pipeline, so what all uh, stages and jobs are available in that pipeline, I can look into that. And before that, you can see, this is my uh, icon of my uh, GitLab. So the, here's me here, me, Sheikh Mohammed goes. And these all stages I have, the, the first one is build and next one is the test and next one is the deploy. And the next one is like, you know, if you click on this pipeline, it will show you the more dynamic way of pipeline. So the first one is build in the dynamically or schematically, I can say, and we have the test and deploy. We'll discuss all the pipelines in the, uh, in, this, in, the in the series itself, how we can create the pipeline and how we can take advantage of this pipeline features. 
but yeah like you know just about the pipelines you can, where you can look into that since you are using gitlab for source code management and the info, uh, pipeline as a code to create the or say cd pipeline which is continuous integration and continuous deployment and delivery and the next one is jobs so how many jobs are running on this uh, gitlab you can look into the, all the jobs that have been running so the uh, 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 deploy, SAS, and test. So, what all jobs had been running on each branch, and what is the commit ID, and who was created, and what is the um, you know this particular job ID. So, you, you can look into that all the uh, pipeline ID. Sorry, that's not a job ID. So, you can look into that, and you can get more in information about it. And you would like to uh, re retry the particular job or rerun the particular job, you can take advantage of this retry button, and you can rerun the same job. Are there any issues going on? And you can see here what is the timing it has taken to run this particular job. So the, the time was 29 seconds and when it was created, it was created three days ago. And what is the status? Like, is it failed or uh, passed? So this is status you can look into that. If it is green, it is, that means it is passed. If it isn't, you know, um, uh, it's not even orange. I don't know how to say that is a color. So if it is this color, it is in a failed state. So that's about the, all the jobs information. So it's more dynamic. So if you click on this, so you can, you can look into the, the particular job over here. And this is all the job logs and um, uh, when, who, who, uh, as I've seen, like when it was created and who were created and what is the duration. So when it was, uh, you know, uh, finished, what is the timeout and what is the timeout for this particular job and runner who is, which runner used. So uh, we'll discuss about all the runners and what is the commit ID and what file it has been changed and what is the pipeline ID also. You can see here, if I click on this pipeline ID, it will bring this uh, CACD pipeline as completely. So on which pipeline this particular job had ran and um, what is the job and the next is going to execute. So you can look into that all the um, uh, information over here by uh, clicking on this particular uh, uh, feature. So that's all about the jobs. And the next one is pipeline editor. So pipeline editor is amazing, uh, uh, amazing feature that are available in the uh, GitLab, so you can take advantage of this pipeline editor and you can edit all your pipeline uh, and you can commit into the particular source bench uh, or you can, uh, you, you can, if you want to validate this pipeline, so what you can do, you can take the validate uh, feature, valid in the sense of, uh, did you write the, this uh, um, GitLab state.yml file as uh, standardized of GitLab or are there any issues was happening? So you can take advantage of it. So let's go to the validate and, you know, you can, if you want to validate the pipeline, you can validate the pipeline. And if you see here, pipeline will not run on the selected trigger, the rule configuration prevented by any jobs from the being added into that. So there is some issues that happen. That's why it is showing this particular issue. And this is the pipeline source. You can take the pipeline source as a, oh, currently it has been not been available. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So you can use the validate as the uh, feature uh, where you can, you know, um validate all your pipeline and you can get more information about at the standards and what is the visualize like you know what all jobs or what all stages are going to be executed by running this particular pipeline so the first one is build and test and deploy we have a three stages so these are all the stages name and full configuration so if you want to see the full configuration you can look into that like you know what all uh, jobs are going to call and pre and post so you can get more information about our your entire uh, pipeline as a code but it's more about the only view only. So you can just look into that. You cannot do any changes. But if you want to edit it, you can come here. You can, you know, you can take advantage of edit and you can do that. So, or if you want to browse any template, you can click on this browse template and um, you can go to the official documentation or which is available in the public. So which is git foes and you can come here. You can take advantage of code quality and GitLab C.YAML. So you can take advantage of it, uh, which is a show, which is the uh, inherit uh, jobs that are available here. And if I, so wow, we have a bunch of things. If I filter it, dot GitLab, iPhone CI dot YAML. Oh, we have uh, many files are available in this. Okay, so these are all the inherit jobs. So you can come here and you can take advantage of these all the scripts. So if you want to inherit, you can take advantage of it. Since GitLab itself is suggesting, if you want to browse some uh, templates, you can take advantage of it. You can look into that and you can see how they're using the standards. And you know, uh, if you want to take a snippet, you can copy it and just customize it, uh, the script that you want to customize it and just, just integrate into your pipeline. So that's how guys, like can take a more advantage of GitLab uh, uh, as the uh, features. 
and cc catalog so you can take advantage of cc catalog and you can look into the catalog what all catalogs are available so you can go into any one of the uh, catalog and you can look into that what how they are using the include uh, include components and inputs so you can just look into that and you can refer the same uh, includes or components or um, uh, 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 particular the particular uh, catalog and you can reuse into your pipeline so that's all about pipeline editor and uh, if i go to the next feature which is a pipeline schedule so since you have been discussing about CACD pipeline, so if you would like to schedule a pipeline on particular brand, so you can take advantage of the schedule, which means like you would like to run the pipeline uh, at the midnight. So you, you cannot wake up and I mean, you're regular, you can wake up as a human being, but it's not a good practice. Like, you know, you can wake up at that time and do the work. So what you can do, you can do more amazing automation by taking advantage of uh, pipeline schedule. So you can give a... You can you can opt for this feature. So once you opt for the feature feature, you can specify when you want to run your um, pipeline. You can specify the cron job. So if you want to run on every day at 3:23 p.m. or uh, it's giving few options every week and every month. If you want to customize it, you can write it up your own uh, uh, cron job and you can uh, you can just run it. And what is the time zone? So it is giving a multi multiple time zone. Since we are in India. Uh, our time zone will be Kolkata. So if you want to run on Kolkata time zone, so you can specify it. And which branch you want to run. So on which branch you want to run the pipeline. So you have a bunch of pipelines, so DevSecOps, GitLabs, and Revert. So you can specify it. Are there any uh, variables you want to pass as a dynamically? You can pass the variables and files so you can run the pipeline. So the main usage of this pipeline schedule is, guys, like, you know, if you want to run a pipeline uh, in a different time or which you're not available, so... Or if you want to run a pipeline on every month or every week or every day or every minute, so you can specify as per your comment and you can get uh, you can take advantage of this pipeline um, schedule and you can run your all the uh, jobs or share, uh, stages by taking advantage of it. So that's all about pipeline schedule. And the next one is artifact. So if you want to upload any artifact, so you can you can upload it and each artifact has its kind of size. So you can look into that and what all jobs has been uh, you know uh, ran and how what all artifact has been created. So you can take advantage of it. You can look into that. And if I come down, it will be showing all the uh, uh, artifacts. Uh, if you see here, so I'm going to browse this artifact, which is Venem and uh, when env and we have the bin and we have the so there i have used the uh, virtual env so that's why it has created one artifact over here and it is it's browsable guys so it, it has some restrictions like you know where you can use the uh, some amount of gb or mb i'm not sure like you know how much uh, mb you can use on communication but i'll get back to that uh, amount so what all uh, how much amount of mb or gb you can use it on community edition but yeah, if you see here, like, you know, we have the, each file, it is more than uh, 5 MB and 2 KB and depend on the artifact. So you can look into the, all the artifact, you know, you can take advantage of it. So since my artifact has some kind of expiry, that's why a few artifacts are not been available over here. But yeah, so if you see, on, I have created an artifact on build, so that's why it's available. But then deploy, I have not been created, but I have specified the artifact has to be created. So that's about artifact. So you can keep artifact into GitLab. You can store over here, and you can reuse into your multiple environment if you're using any, you know, multi-stage doc, uh, multi-environment uh, builds. All. So next one is secure. So already we discussed about secure, like you know where you can uh, look into the security capabilities and you know configurations and audit events. And the next one is deploy. So this is an amazing one, guys. Like you know, uh, while you want to deploy it, uh, let me close this all the tabs which is unnecessary. So next one is release. So if you take advantage of uh, release feature under deploy, so you can create a releases and you can uh, accordingly you can create the uh, tags. So where you want to specifically deploying into the particular, um, you know, uh, particular binaries or target environment. So you can take advantage of this release and you can create the new releases. And once it is created, so what is the tag name? What is the release title? And you can take advantage of it and how you want to release it and what all URLs are. You can specify more dynamic information releases. So that's the major, uh, major usage of releases. And feature flags. So if you want to uh, keep any feature flags, you can take advantage of it and you can keep the, uh, each, each feature should be its own uh, feature flags. And package registry. So, so since we have not specified in package registry, but it's kind of thing where you can publish the packages. Let's example, you are working on the, any uh, 
um, Java project. So what you, what you can do, you create the some artifacts and you create a jar or ER file. So you'd like to store those artifacts or such particular registry. So you can take advantage of this packet registry. You can keep all the artifacts over here and you can share, share to uh, uh, across your team members or if you if this repository is under uh, public, so you can share to our uh, public people. And content registry, so already we discussed, so GitLab can be used to store the Docker images or any other container runtime. So if you see here, Simul itself says that is a Docker. Uh, it's not a Docker, it's a container, sorry. Since uh, we uh, get habited to call the uh, Docker as a container every time, because in the current world, most of the companies have been using container runtime as a Docker. So that's why whenever you hide the container, you get the name of the Docker. Yeah, but like, you know, whenever you create the Docker build and when you're, um, you know, um, uh, when you build the Docker image, so you should keep those image uh, into any one of the registry to uh, deploy into the, any multiple environments or uh, uh, for a period of time to stay back and uh, deploying into multiple environments or multiple features or sharing across the different teams. So that's why like, you know, this GitLab has been giving amazing features such as you can keep all your Docker images or any container runtime images into Docker, um, into GitLab itself. So you can follow this, like, you know, th th this particular commands. Once your uh, image get built, you can use a Docker login, register.gitlab.com, and you need to add the image registry. So just you need to build it. If you are, haven't built it, or you can push the, your, uh, uh, sorry, you can push your image into the particular registry, which is my my side, I'm register.gitlab.com. And this is my username, Shakebyte, and this is my project. So each project, you can keep its own uh, content registry, guys. Like if you see here, this is my project. Uh, this is my uh, uh, GitLab ID, and this is my project uh, name. So if I go to the next project, the project name can be changed, which means like in each project, you can build multiple, um, you know, container runtime images, and you can, you can store over here. So that's about the container registry, and we have the model registry. If you have any models to be stored over here, and you can take advantage of, uh, you know, uh, storing over here uh, since you are what we uh, since the machine learning and AI has been booming these days. So, uh, if you have created any models, uh, if you would like to keep those models and track, or if you want to keep this model stored in a particular place, so you can take advantage of this model registry, you can keep over here, and you can do multiple predictions uh, by uh, using those models and different versions of models, and you can uh, take advantage of it uh, by predicting uh, better values on uh, machine learning on AI. That is about model registry, and we have the uh, pages. So you can write some different kinds of pages. So you can update, upload it up, and you can, um, you know, it's kind of a dynamic feature. I can say that. Um, a less example, I can say that you know, if, if your pages wants to write it up and deploy it as separately, you can take advantage of it. Just you can configure it and create a YAML file, and you can deploy it on different sites. Which means like it's more dynamic, so you don't need to require any bunch of frameworks to be writable and bunch of frameworks to be uh, mentioned on uh, local or just debugging it and writing up. So you don't need to worry about it. So what you can do, you can come here, you can uh, take a image and you can create the uh, you know page and it's dynamically go and available on as per your um, you know code that you have specified. Which means it most probability you use for static website, which is content is not more dynamic. So content is only static, so you can take advantage of it. And next one is operate. So we have the environment. So you, how many environments you would like to use it and um, how you can mention the environment. So if you see here, we have the production. And if you come down, so you can take advantage of creating a new environment. So you can spin up with the different environments by uh, taking advantage of this environments um, feature. And Kubernetes cluster, so uh, like you know, you can connect your Kubernetes cluster directly with the GitLab. So where you, you can copy all your uh, Kubernetes definitions files from here to there, and you can do that more dynamically. Since we have the GitOps tools such as Flux, Flagger, Linkerd, and we have the Argo CD also. So if you don't want to go with the GitOps, so what you can do, you can take advantage of this, and you can configure one agent to um, you know uh, connect with your GitLab and your uh, your uh, Kubernetes cluster. And if you see here, uh, every um, new Google account platform, GCP account releases, uh, receive three hundred dollars credit up to sign up. Which means, like, if you have opted for this service, so GCP cluster, GCP, which is Google Cloud provider, is giving a uh, three hundred dollars as a credit, and you can utilize it and you can uh, play around it. So if, 
So you, you can take advantage of these guys, like you know, you can integrate your this GitLab with your Kubernetes. You can do more dynamic deployments into Kubernetes environment uh, by specifying namespace or different clusters. So that's about Kubernetes clusters, and we have the Terraform state. So you can store your Terraform states files over here. And since you want to keep those are in any remote, remote, remote area, so you can take advantage of it. You can um, uh, you can take advantage. We can store the Terraform state states files and all. And Terraform module. So since you have, if you have any created Terraform module, so uh, you can keep over here, and you know you can reuse it across your multiple environments. And Google Cloud. So this is the amazing feature. Like you know, uh, you can integrate your Google Cloud with the, uh, GitLab. So you can bring the multiple services onboarded into GitLab, making conversation between your cloud and this uh, um, GitLab CI/CD or GitLab source code management. Tool. And the next one, monitor. So if you want to track the errors, you can take advantage of this error tracking, and you know you can you can get more information about it. And alerts if you after creation of errors. So if you want to create any alerts, you can create it. And if you want to create any incidents to be created, you can create it up. So these are interlinked guys, like you know, error tracking, alerts, and incidents. And service desk. So it's just connect with your user and offer customer support through the email through inside of GitLab, which means like if you want to connect um, service decks or support, so you can take advantage of it. And uh, you can connect with your internal uh, GitLab and you can get more uh, helpful uh, support from them. The next one is analyze. So if you want to get the more analyzed streaming uh, analysis data of your GitLab repository or pipeline, so you can take advantage of it and uh, contribute analysis like, uh, like how each person is contributing as for himself, myself, I'm a Sheikh Muhammad, so I have contributed on March, uh, sorry, April 1st, so it's, so it's showing, and uh, how many commits will happen, so you can look into the data more dynamically. And CSL analytics, so um, CSL analytics kind of thing where you can analyze your uh, continuous integration deployment, so how the uh, pipelines has been getting passed, so what is the pipeline duration and what all commits has been coming up on each day and what is commit ID. So you can get more dynamic information about the uh, um, your CCD pipelines. And you can see here we have total 15 pipelines. What is the success ratio? Which is out of 15 pipelines, so I think my seven pipeline was succeeded and that's why I got 50%, which means seven pipelines were failed. So oh, this is how you can see. Successful pipelines were seven and failed pipelines were seven. So that's why it's a 50% of score. So if it is... Um, 15 and 0, so it will show you the 100. So that's how you can get more information about it, like, you know, by specifying or by clicking on the CSA analysis. And we have the uh, pipeline charts. You can go to last week and last month and last year, and accordingly you can uh, go, get more dynamic data. And next one is repository analysis. So repository analysis, uh, which, is, which is similar to the pipeline analytics, which means, like, you know, uh, uh, which is the programming language that you have used and what is how much percentage you have used and uh, code coverage of the particular statistics and you can look into that and commit statistics or how many commits was happened on each day and so you can get more dynamic data you know uh, by following this uh, repository analytics and model experiment so if you are using any machine learning model or any uh, ai based model so you can look into that how many, how your model is uh, performing by specifying into uh, different aspects of passing into some dynamic data into your model. So this feature is more uh, relating to the uh, 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 more relating to the uh, you know this uh, uh, AI and uh, machine learning models. So that's all about the uh, you know all the features and components that are available on project level. And in the next video we will see how we can use these settings like GitLab settings because we have the a bunch of features that are available on GitLab settings. So we will discuss all those things into the next video. And uh, we'll, we'll get more information about it because we have the different features, general integrations by book. So we have a bunch of things to be discussed in the next video. So until then, thanks for watching and uh, share this video to your friends and any person who are willing to learn GitLab. And feel free to drop your comments in comment section and like this video, subscribe to my channel. Bye-bye.